like it or not, the universe is in chaos. For some reason, the universe trends toward disorder. In fact, there are only very few ways to achieve order against nearly infinitely many possibilities for those things to be disarranged. According to the second law of thermodynamics, as one goes forward in time, the net entropy or degree of disorder of any isolated or closed system will always increase or at least stay the same. So to put things in order, scientists studied entropy. Entropy is the measure of molecular randomness or disorder. Entropy is all around you, from your floor getting dusty, heat spreading out from your coffee, or your cells slowly degrading. So let's take a look at some examples of entropy and the factors affecting it. There is entropy within our everyday lives. In making our morning cup of coffee, for example, when we boil water with the use of conduction in a closed system such as a kettle, internal energy from the metal plate which has a higher temperature excites the molecules of the water being boiled, causing movement of the atoms at random, thus an increase within its temperature and entropy. This exhibits how temperature is a factor in affecting an object's entropy. The second law of thermodynamics states that entropy within a closed system must always increase. Another example is when we pour the hot water onto grounded coffee beans. The heat transfers to the coffee beans causing coffee to be extracted. Portions of coffee extracted in water are combined, and if you add sugar to your coffee, you'll always get an even mix of the three. This is the most disordered state. This exhibits another factor affecting entropy, which is particles. As the number of overall particles increase, the choice of their arrangements increase as well, thus an increase in entropy. And because entropy can never decrease, your coffee can never spontaneously unmix itself. The coffee needs continual input of energy to maintain its temperature. If we let the cup of coffee sit for a day, we notice that some of the water has evaporated. The water would no longer be in the cup, but exist as water vapor in the room. Good morning! Before I explain to you the concept of entropy in cooking, since your girl is staying at home today, I might as well have breakfast! So here are the materials that you need to prepare. Let's start! First, we need to prepare a batter. Crack an egg and whisk it thoroughly. After that, add some all-purpose cream in order for the batter to have a thicker consistency. Don't forget to season it with salt and pepper to taste. Once that's done, start by taking a slice of bread. Soak it in the batter. Make sure to coat both sides of the bread evenly. After that, you can set it aside. Start the stove and preheat the pan. Add a slice of butter and spread it evenly across the pan. Using a spatula, carefully place your slices of bread into the preheated pan. Make sure to flip the bread for it to cook evenly on both sides. 
Turn off the heat once you're done. Ta-da! Looks yummy, right? Now, the concept of entropy is evident in this example because First, change in phase. As I was cooking the toast, the first thing I did was to put a slice of butter on a heated pan causing it to melt. This reaction has a high entropy because it caused a solid butter at room temperature to melt into a liquid state. Second, change in temperature. During the cooking process, when heat was applied, the temperature rises, therefore it possessed great kinetic energy. Exciting the butter's molecules caused its particles to move around at a faster rate, hence producing disorder in the system. Lastly, change in the number of particles. When I prepared the batter for the toasts, I added an egg with all-purpose cream seasoning it with salt and pepper. Whisking this batter caused the substances to mix all together, creating disorder and a change in the number of particles each substance originally had. Now that I have shared that with you, it's time for me to have my breakfast. Finally! So I'll be cooking a Filipino dessert called gulaman or gelatin. In this process, we can see how the principles of entropy work. First off, I'm pouring 6 cups of water inside the pan. Take note that the stove is not open yet. Then I am pouring 1 sachet of gelatin powder to create the mixture. Now I'm stirring the mixture so that the powder dissolves into the liquid water. From a low entropy powder, the gelatin reached a higher entropy as it becomes a liquid by stirring it and dissolving it in the water. To finish the mixture, I am putting 3 teaspoons of sugar into the mixture. And this sugar will be of higher entropy as it dissolves to become a liquid. fact that we can stir the mixture is already telling us that the substance can freely move and this is because spaces in between the particles of a liquid is much more spacious than of the solids. Then as can you see as I stir it out, there are still some solid particles left. That is because the substance still doesn't receive enough factors that can highly increase or influence its entropy. Now, I'm turning on the stove with a power of 1,800 watts. The stove will provide an increase of temperature as it cooks the gelatin mixture. As you can see, the mixture is moving in a random and disrupted order, which means that the atoms of the substance are being disordered. That randomness is what called the entropy. Now we can see that the gelatin is boiling. As the temperature goes up, we can now see that some of the particles of the liquid mixture are turning into gas as it releases off steam. This steam is an example of a very high entropy since it is a form of gas. Since the mixture is now cooked and dissolved, we can now turn off the stove. I'm pouring off the mixture into a more presentable container through a strain. This will filter out the mixture so that we're sure that no solid particles will get through. Then I'm letting the gelatin mixture cool off for 3 to 4 hours at a room temperature. This is to turn the mixture into a solid again as gelatin dessert is meant to be a solid. After cooling it off, we can now see that the mixture has turned into solid again and now with a low entropy. We can see that the gelatin is in a much rigid structure compared to before and we cannot see any disorderliness in the food. And that is how entropy works in the process of cooking gelatin.
Hi guys, I'm Jansen Joseph V. Francisco. Today I'm going to show you the concepts of entropy. So let's define entropy as heat energy denoted as Q that is moving out of one hot medium to another cold medium at the rate set by temperature denoted as T. Thus, the entropy or S is equal to the heat energy over temperature. To know more about the concepts of entropy, I will show you how the entropy of the system and the entropy of the universe work. The first concept will be the entropy of the system. Assuming that there are two cups and the first cup contains hot water and we call it as system A, while for the cup containing the cold water will be the system B. Heat energy flows from hot objects to cold objects and once are at equal temperature, this state is called thermal equilibrium. For the temperature of system A, we'll use Ta, and for the system B, we'll use Tb. Now, as the object loses heat, for system A, the entropy decreases which makes it a negative. While as the object gains heat, for system B, the entropy increases which gains a positive sign. The second concept is the entropy of the universe. On this part, we can say that the entropy of the universe is the change in entropy or delta S. For better understanding, I will give you two different cases. On the first case, since we have already discussed that the heat energy flows from hot objects to colder one, let's say that hot object has an initial temperature of 60 Kelvin and heat energy of 300 joules. On the other hand, the cold object has an initial temperature of 30 Kelvin and the same heat energy as the hot object. Entropy decreases or increases depending on how the heat was transferred. The formula will be delta S is equal to heat energy over the initial temperature of cold object minus the heat energy over the initial temperature of the hot object. We will substitute the given and we will get the final answer of 5 joules per Kelvin. Therefore, we can say that the entropy increases because of the positive sign indicating that it was absorbed. Now for the second case, we have a diabetic process or the process in which no heat enters or leaves the system. The examples of this are the rapid escape of air from the burst tire and balloon. In a diabetic process, Q is equivalent to zero which results to have also a zero entropy of the universe. Always remember that the change in entropy may be positive or negative depending upon the heat transfer.